from snorting cocaine in Learjets to nights of wild sex that led to her unplanned pregnancy, she later aborted. This is the untold crazy sex life of Stevie Nicks and how her sex escapades led to some of her life's greatest regrets. Stevie Nicks may have mellowed a lot more these days. After all, she's fast approaching her 80s. But back in the day, she was very much a wild woman, and her story is one of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. It all began in a California high school. There was a genre on the rise known as psychedelic rock, and its practitioners believed very strange things. Stevie Nicks met Lindsey Buckingham in the mid-60s, during her senior year of high school. At the time, he was performing a rendition of the hit song California Dreaming, and Stevie spontaneously joined in. As it turned out, the two of them complemented each other really well. This was the start of a wonderful creative partnership with strong sexual and romantic elements. At the time, Lindsay was a member of a psychedelic rock band known as Fritz. When two of the members of his band left to go to college, he quickly replaced them with Stevie. The pair were inspired by Jimi Hendrix and Janis Joplin, whose incredible stage performances were supercharged by heavy drug abuse. Though Stevie tried college, she soon dropped out to dive into the wonderful world of rock and roll. She dreamed of success and the wild and free rock star life, but real life was not as simple as that. So began the hardest years of Stevie and Lindsay's relationship. After the release of their first album, Buckingham Nicks, which has quite the raunchy cover, was not met with success, Stevie had to settle for odd jobs while Lindsay left her to tour with another band. Stevie was so lonely that she was driven to cocaine use. During this time, she wrote Rhiannon, one of her most famous ever songs. When Lindsay returned, there was a strain on their relationship. So much so that they would have split up had he not found jobs for them. Mick Fleetwood wanted Lindsay to join his band as a guitarist, but Lindsay said he would only join if Stevie could come along as well. This began another chapter in the turbulent romance of Lindsay and Stevie. However, further complications lay ahead. As Fleetwood Mac took off, Lindsay and Stevie tried their best to renew their commitment to each other. However, things just weren't working out. But rather than sit as two adults and have a mature conversation, they decided to ignore their feelings and focus on their professionalism. Unfortunately, this strategy blew up in their faces. What happened was that Lindsay began sneaking bits and pieces of how he felt about Stevie into the lyrics of their songs. In Go Your Own Way, he explicitly stated that all Stevie wanted to do was shack up with different men. This drove Stevie crazy. So much so that in 1976, after years of trying to make it work, they finally called it quits. To prevent the band from breaking up, they decided to stay together and keep things exclusively professional. But how could this not be a recipe for disaster? While Fleetwood Mac was recording its second album, Rumors, Stevie and Mick Fleetwood were both deep in the throes of heartache. It was 1977, and Mick had just remarried his wife, Jenny Boyd, whom he had divorced the same year Stevie and Lindsay called it quits. Well, one thing led to another, and Stevie and Mick started an ill-advised but remarkably passionate affair. When the word got out, it sent ripples of shock throughout their community. Everyone was outraged because Mick had just gotten back together with his wife, with whom he had two beautiful girls. Stevie, shocked by her own actions, stated that she was unsure how the whole thing could have happened. Though the pair were comfortable with each other, they decided to call it quits for the sake of the band. Had they proceeded, it would have been the end for Fleetwood Mac. The love triangle between Stevie, Lindsay, and Mick had finally come to an uneasy rest, but things between the trio were far from over. 50 years later, the tension between them finally came to a thunderous snap. But before then, Stevie tried her hands at widening her dating pool. One prominent relationship Stevie had during this period was with Eagles frontman, Don Henley. Their relationship lasted just a year, but what a year it was. Being around the Eagles exposed Stevie to a whole different lifestyle. One marked by extravagance, indiscriminate spending, and lots of sex and drugs. The Eagles had no sense of restraint at all. They would charter jets up and down the country at a whim. They also snorted drugs like they were vacuum cleaners. For a brief, beautiful time, Stevie got to be a part of this journey. Eventually, Stevie and Don drifted apart. But they didn't do so as cleanly as the public thought. See, five decades later, Stevie disclosed that while they were together, she got pregnant. However, she just couldn't imagine bringing a child into the world because of how wildly they lived. Besides, she was abusing drugs heavily at the time. As a result, she had an abortion. 
Stevie stated that if the two of them had got married and had a baby girl, she would have named her Sarah. However, that was a dream for another life. In this one, she moved on to date Interscope Records co-founder Jimmy Iovine, who was producing her first solo album. Their romance was short-lived, after which Stevie made one of the biggest mistakes of her life. In 1982, Stevie's best friend Robin Anderson died of leukemia. Stevie, who was Robin's son's godmother, was so angry at how helpless she felt. She so desperately wanted to help the family out. As a result, she made the mistake of getting married to Kim Anderson, Robin's widower. Their relationship was incredibly loveless and short-lived. Looking back at it, Stevie stated that romance was not a part of the equation at all. They were two aggrieved individuals who thought they could fix things with marriage. Even though they split up, Stevie remained an active godmother and helped Robin's son get through college. The last high-profile relationship Stevie had was with Eagles singer and guitarist Joe Walsh. She had recently dated his bandmate Don, but we all know by now that that is not enough to stop Stevie. Stevie has stated that the three-year romance was the greatest love of her life. It was love at first sight when she ran into him at the Mansions Hotel in Dallas, Texas. In Stevie's own words, I walked across the room and I sat on the bar stool next to him. Two seconds later, I crawled into his lap and that was it. Stevie said that she and Joe were the perfect, complete, crazy pair. But if this is the case, why did they split up? If you guessed drugs, you'd be 100% right. Theirs was a mad love marked by crazy substance abuse. When Stevie dated Don, he was a bad influence on her. But in this case, she was the bad influence on Joe. Drugs were messing them up so much that even good sex could no longer keep them together. Deciding he had had enough, Joe traveled all the way to Australia to get away from Stevie. That crazy rock and roll era of sex and drugs came to an end. However, the echoes of that lifestyle followed Stevie for the rest of her life. Though she never dressed provocatively, she was a sex symbol in her own way. In an interview with Rolling Stone magazine, she said she used her sexuality by being mysterious. Stevie, who has denied all claims that she is a witch, said that singers today use their sexuality in too obvious a manner. Is this a correct assessment, or is she just being old-fashioned? As experienced as she is now, there are still some situations she doesn't know how to handle, especially the festering sore caused by her relationship with Lindsay Buckingham. In 2018, Lindsay Buckingham was unceremoniously let go from Fleetwood Mac. This move came as a shock to the international music community. Buckingham had undoubtedly helped build the band up into what it is today. So what exactly was the issue? According to Buckingham, Stevie was the reason he was out. The two of them could no longer make things work. He stated that Stevie gave Mick an ultimatum between him and her. It was no shock to him that the band chose her over him. Stevie has gone on record challenging these remarks. She stated that she wanted to take a break from the band because it had become a toxic work environment. Currently, the two lifelong friends are still in conflict with each other. But one thing is clear, Fleetwood Mac will never be the same again. As she's in her mid-70s now, Stevie's crazy life of sex and drugs is way behind her. She's loved, lost, and loved again. There's definitely a lot she would like to do over, but the past is the past and all any of us can do is learn from it. If you enjoyed this video, there's a good chance you'll also enjoy the one showing on your screen right now. Click, enjoy, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you on the next one.